The idea of low-cost housing as for long sounded like a myth in Kenya, with most of the houses being constructed targeting the medium and the high end of the market. I think you're right in the observation that a um, number of us that are coming into the market uh, targeting the high end. And this is substantially attributable to the fact that uh, the high end neighborhoods uh, are well taken care of insofar as infrastructure is concerned. The opening up of new areas that can potentially be amenable to low cost housing uh, essentially lack the basic infrastructure. And therefore, the potential developers are attracted to areas which have um, um, the requisite invest in investment in infrastructure and therefore associated with the high cost of, of land. And linked to that, of course, is whenever new areas are open to uh, infrastructure, uh, like new roads coming up, new highways, new bypasses, the cost of land around those areas tend to shoot up immediately. Kenya's housing demand is at 200,000 units every year, or supply is at 35,000, most of which are priced for mid-income earners, and therefore the majority low-income earners cannot afford to buy or rent. The income per capita uh, of Kenya is now close to 1,400. A majority of the households are basically in the lower income segment. Therefore, uh, looking at a house that is affordable to many of the people, you're basically looking at houses that are in the range of 2 million, 3 million, that will cater for a substantial portion of urban population that is poor. And for that to be catered for, in my view, we need to look at um, opening up and not just new areas um, in terms of infrastructure and therefore link that to the cost of land, but most importantly invest in um, uh, technologies uh, in terms of inputs that can make the overall cost of construction uh, to be affordable. In recent years, Kenya has witnessed influx of various technologies geared towards lowering the cost of housing. Some of these include prefabricated methods and container housing. Broadly, what Koto technology is called is EPS, which is expanded polystyrene. But um, it's easier to think about it as a column and beam structure. When you're building, you, the main building blocks of anything is columns and beams. So what we have is a column and beam structure with permanent formwork, uh, which means, um, and basically what we are doing is we are creating panels that are also, uh, which house the columns and also end up being load-bearing walls. Containers are typically eight feet by 40 feet, and uh, we are able to convert uh, a typical shipping line container into a one bedroom house, even two and three, even studios for really low cost houses and small houses for guys who are beginning life. According to the investors in these two fields, it is possible to provide houses that are significantly cheaper than the conventional brick and mortar. What makes it low cost is uh, basically the input in a container. Uh, you cannot compare that with a brick and mortar where you have to buy cement, you have to buy sand and uh, you have to procure an expensive architect and uh, uh, fundies, all, all that. Yeah. So the works that, uh, that are done on a container is uh, you visualize what you need to have in a container. If it is a living room, one bedroom house uh, with a washroom, then you have a typical house. And while there the advantage of such technologies is higher speed of production, the investors point towards need to explore them in large scale. Until it gets to a level where you're building uh, estates or you're doing developments on scale, then uh, it may not end up being cheaper because while if I can build one house in 30 days very quickly, um, the cost savings are not significant. But if I can build a thousand houses, uh, much faster. You can imagine what the cost savings are from a labor point of view, from a materials point of view, from even a financing point of view. So technologies like ours are geared for mass housing. Uh, so maybe that is why uh, the, the, the low, the, 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 we are not maybe affecting the, uh, the actual cost of price, uh, the actual price of housing at this moment because there's no mass housing project that is uh, employing these technologies. But even with the expectations that investments in public infrastructure such as roads will enable cheaper construction, players in this field are struggling to change the perception of potential home buyers. So many other people may not consider container houses as, 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 as habitable or as, as decent. So you have to 
temper that with the test and preference differences. There are people who may not, um, who may prefer um, the conventional house as opposed to a container house. So whereas the container uh, houses uh, could go a long way, it should be looked as one of the many solutions. Uh, other solutions could arise from the prefabricated technology uh, that makes, um, uh, that lowers the cost of construction per unit.